Okay, so we have thus far, um, I guess we've had two weeks of classes, so uh, four classes now. And in that time, we've learned about uh, numbers, the different kinds of numbers, integers and floats. We have learned about uh, variables, how to assign to them, uh, how to change them, how to use them in expressions. We've learned about, uh, well, all of the arithmetic operations. We learned about strings and the things you can do to them. Um, so some of the arithmetic operations carry over to strings, things like adding strings together and multiplying strings by integers. Uh, we learned how to define functions. We learned how to do, uh, well, how to create arrays, different ways of creating them, and uh, ways of iterating over arrays, and we've seen how to do, uh, well, while loops and, uh, and if statements. So for procedural programming, that's about it. Um, that's, that's more or less all there is to, uh, to procedural programming. So, and this has been, I'll admit, uh, for those of you who've programmed before, this two weeks probably is mostly review. Maybe there's a few things available in Python that are not available in the languages you know, um, but mostly review. And for those of you who never programmed before, um, this, uh, this two weeks probably went by pretty quickly. Um, so that this may have been a rushed, uh, a rushed introduction to things. So for the next couple of classes, we're going to stop learning all this, new, uh, all this new programming language stuff and we'll just look at applying it. So we'll, uh, we'll take a breath and relax and, and see what we can do with all the stuff we've learned rather than trying to cram uh, more knowledge in, uh, into ourselves. Um, so uh, so this, this week is sort of a, a breather week and the assignment shows that too. So, if you look at the third assignment, it basically the assignment statement is make a game. Um, you know, there's some, uh, some guidelines about what should be included in your game or how it should, uh, how it should flow, but uh, essentially, um, essentially it's up to you what, what kind of game you want to make and what you want to do. And again, this is a little bit like, you know, if we were studying art, Maybe we would have spent the last two weeks learning about different kinds of paints, uh, ways, color theory on how to mix paints together to get the colors you want. And this week, the assignment is basically make a painting. Um, so use what you know and make something creative with it. Um, and hopefully this, you know, for those of you who've been getting tired of all this, uh, you know, just learning new things all the time and, uh, and learning new constructs and, and fighting with those, now is your chance to express yourself. So now is your chance to do something creative and, uh, and do it, express it in code. So um, <clears throat> your assignment is to make a game and we'll actually make a couple of games in class because the typical, uh, well there's a common structure that's, that's typical to, uh, to games. And, uh, and we'll express it, uh, well, 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 we'll do that through a few examples. We'll see it through a few examples. Um, so I'm not going to ask you for suggestions on what the game should be about. I have an idea. Uh, I would like to make a, uh, a word scramble game. So basically a game that presents you with some letters and says, so the, the main... Uh, the main form of play is you're presented with some letters and you should, uh, you should rearrange those letters into a word. So uh, let's maybe write down, start by writing down what we want from a game or what, what a game should have and then we'll, uh, we'll implement it.
Okay. So this is the basic uh, basic way it's going to work. Yep. You cannot run gedit. Okay, because this isn't PowerShell. This is Bash shell under Linux. Yeah. So under PowerShell, you'll use your own uh, text editor, whichever you have, whichever you've installed, Notepad++ or, or Notepad. Yeah. Yep. Are you recording? Yes, I'm recording. Um, okay, so just, I mean, we, we have an idea what we want this game to do. But in general, what are the features of games? Yep. Okay, so the wish list should include, uh, should be fun to play. Yep. Yep. Okay, so. Uh, Keep track of score. Yep. Should be challenging. Okay. Uh, some number of lives, let's say, and maybe uh, some element of, let's say, limited time. Now, uh, so we, we'd like to do something like have some number of lives, and I don't know, three is pretty common. Um, should be challenging. So this is a tricky one, because what's challenging for me may not be challenging for someone else. So how do games usually get around that problem? Yeah, they have skill levels. But even more than that, even arcade games which don't let you select a skill level. It gets harder over time. Yeah. So we would like this to start easy and get harder over time. So starting easy is, uh, again, that's a relative thing. For some, for some people, it doesn't matter how easy we make it, it will still be difficult. Um, but we'll start at a fairly easy level and then quickly uh, make it more difficult. Uh, any other features of games? Bosses. What's that? Bosses. Bosses? Okay. Uh, so maybe we want some boss words at the end of each level. Sure, a sentence, or uh, or just a really big word, or I don't know. Actually, I don't know what's hard. Are big words harder to rearrange, or or small words difficult to to say? Yep. Okay. Um, in what sense that they get to play it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's say. So it's really interactive. It's not, uh, well, interestingly, so I, I have done not exactly a game, but training sessions in which um, we're asked to learn about some topic. And the way you learn it is you're presented with some text. Uh, then you're presented with a question. And then you're presented with the answer to that question. So the thing never asks you what the answer was never tells you, never checks if you got the right answer. Um, so that's not really a game, that kind of, uh, that kind of thing. So we, we don't just want to show you some scrambled letters and then, uh, then show you the word that they can make. We want you to, to try and find that word. Okay. Is there any other features? Yep. A what? Okay, so uh, let's say we shouldn't harass uh, the player with a question, let's say, repeatedly. So um, 
And so if you think of this repeatedly asking for the, this rearranging this thing into a word, well, there should be a way out of that. If you really can't get this one, um, whatever, you just press enter or enter a blank word or something. You get it wrong, but at least, uh, at least it doesn't just stay there forever until you, you can get that right. Yep. Okay, um, so a refinement of that, maybe uh, allow a limited number of skips. So it's sort of a second class of lives. Yep. Hints? Uh, okay. Hints. Anything else? Yep. Uh, you could uh, change it to allow two people to compete against each other. Okay. Head to head mode. And uh, well, while we're at that, we might as well go uh, the massive multiplayer mode as well. So make it into an online game that uh, you can compete against thousands of other people. Yep. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> okay, so um, should have a store. <laughs> you can pay cash to level up. I don't know. Um, okay, so now we're getting into some, you know, some uh, far into the future features. We won't get all these done today. Um, in particular, I doubt we're going to make a game uh, today that by the end of the class we'll have uh, thousands of online users, but uh, we can dream. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to try and develop this game in a sort of agile way, uh, in the sense that, so there's, a, there's this notion of different ways of developing code and uh, while there's, there's sort of large scale waterfall methods that do things like say well the way you make an application is you spend weeks and weeks and or months and months figuring out exactly how it's going to work what it should do designing the structure of the code um, you know right to the point of uh, of even having like mock-up pictures of what the interface looks like and uh, and so on and then you just go ahead and implement the whole thing exactly as it's described in those documents so I'm not a big fan of that development method and in particular it does not work well for games um, and a lot of that has to do with this uh, this point here that it should be fun to play so it's very difficult in advance to predict exactly how a game should work for it to be fun. Um, you get a lot, you do a lot better by starting with something simple, seeing whether it's fun or not, and maybe why it's not fun, and then tweaking it a little bit, adjusting it, um, constantly making it better or more fun, and, uh, and working that way. So that's a, another mode of, of development is you start with a program that works, but doesn't have very many features, and you just keep adding features. But each time you add a small feature, a small change, uh, you have a program that works. So anytime someone can come along, your boss can come along and say, hey, what's your program doing now? You run it for them right, right then at that instant, rather than say, oh, I still need about a week before I can uh, show you anything. Um, so, so that's what we'll go with, is, is always trying to keep a program that works. Um, okay, so... Our game will be start out in the form of a function that takes no arguments. Okay. So what's the uh, what's maybe the first thing you should uh, you should do? Yep. Okay. So we want to pick a word. Maybe before that even. Yep. Yeah, maybe we should tell the user what something about the game. So uh, we can say, "Welcome to Word 
scramble. Uh, well, let's make it really simple. The goal is to rearrange letters into a word. And if you remember, to make games extra fun, what do you use? <laughs> Exclamation points. Okay. So, uh, okay, good. So we have a working program. The game prints its, uh, prints its welcome message. <clears throat> okay, so now it's been suggested, well, now we need to pick a word. Where are we going to get words from? From the system dictionary. So let's... Uh, Let's load up our words, and I've shown you this before, I think. There's a file on this machine called user share dict words. We open it, we read it, we split it up into words, and that's what we get. So that will give us an array of words. Let's make sure we still have a working program. Okay. So, I have 99,000 words in my dictionary. Now what? Yep. Could we refine that to say not have words that are like 20 letters long in that dictionary? Okay. So, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. And maybe we should look and see what's in this dictionary and see if, see if it makes sense. Um, so we'll go into interactive mode. We'll, uh, we'll load up the dictionary. Of course. And let's look at maybe the first, uh, first 50 words. So the first 50 words... Okay. Um, a is a single word. A is a word. A apostrophe S. A A apostrophe S. A B apostrophe S. A B M apostrophe S. That's a little bit yucky, right? I don't know that we want to scramble things with apostrophes in them. Um, one, because the apostrophe is not really a letter, and two, because usually if it is a letter, it makes it easier. Some, if you do include it, it makes it easier. It's almost always the second last letter, and this last letter is almost always an S, if you see an apostrophe. Um, so maybe we want to clean out this thing and get rid of words with apostrophes. Anybody know how to do that? So we have a big array full of words, strings, and uh, we want to get rid of words that contain apostrophes. Yep. Okay, so we, we have an array. Um, well, do we want to replace the apostrophe with, a, with what? An empty string or a... I mean, if we just remove apostrophes, then we're not necessarily left with words, right? So maybe we could just get rid of those words that have apostrophes in them? How would we do that? Use a while loop? Is there a cleaner way to do that in Python? For. for loop, even cleaner. So we have one array, 
and we want to make another array that has only some of the elements in that array. So what's the technique that we use for that? What's that? Uh, no, not necessarily strip. So let's say So we want, we want the subset of this list that does not contain apostrophes. So we want W for each W in words if uh, apostrophe is not in W. Okay. So, so this here says apostrophe in W evaluates to true if an apostrophe is in W and then we take the not of that, that'll evaluate to false uh, if there's a, an apostrophe in W and if there's not an apostrophe it will evaluate to true. So let's do that. Look at the first 50 words. So indeed we got rid of the uh, we got rid of the words that, uh, that have apostrophes in them. Okay. So let's add that to our code. And this is one of the really nice things about Python is when you're writing code, you can really explore, explore it this way and debug it or figure out exactly what you need to include uh, in this online interactive way. You don't get this with other languages. Yep. Well, um, is there a way to get rid of abbreviations is the question. So what's a feature of abbreviations that makes them, what's that? No capital letters. In fact, capital letters are a bit of, can be a bit of a problem because they, they'll denote proper names and places and things like that. And so they're, they're probably a bit of a pain in general, right? They're maybe not words we want to present with. Um, because, you know, Aachen is a city in Germany. Uh, well, fine, but uh, that there you're testing geography, not vocabulary, maybe. So maybe we should just get rid of words that, uh, that don't have, that have uppercase letters in them. Yes, uh, and that's, so if we look at the first 500 words, that's still true, but if we start looking a little bit deeper, let's say, uh, I don't know, 30,000 words in, we have 90,000 words, so 30,500, then we don't all have uppercase. So um, the reason you get the uppercase words first is because this list is sorted and uppercase letters come before lowercase letters in, in sorted order. Um, so that's why that's happening. But we don't want to rely on that. So we'd like to maybe just get rid of any of these words that have uppercase letters in them. So, well, so what's the strategy for that then? Yep. Uh, that's true, but that relies on this thing being sorted, and I'm not sure that it's totally sorted that way, um, or that there's not some weird words that have an uppercase letter right in the middle, so they would they would do that. But I mean, we just got rid of all of the this, the uh, apostrophes, so we sh we should be able to get rid of the capital letters. Yep. Okay, um, so, so we could take the same strategy we've applied here, except we change the condition. We're not trying to get rid of apostrophes. We're trying to get rid of uppercase letters. Um, and so the suggestion is, well, we look at the first letter, and we ask if that is uh, equal to the first letter when we convert it to lowercase. Right. 
right? If it's already lowercase, then they'll be equal, but if it's uppercase, they won't be equal. Sound fair? So let's check to see how that works. Uh, just lower. So let's look at words two, the first 50 of those. There we go. So now all of our words start with, uh, start with uh, lowercase letters. Um, we can go a little bit, we can do this a little bit fancier. In the string class, there is a method called is lower. That returns true if all of the characters in a string are lowercase letters. Um, so we can just use that. That's also uh, easier and we'll get rid of any weird case where maybe there's a capital letter somewhere at the end of the word. Um, I don't know of any such examples, but, but maybe they, they do exist. Let's look at the 50 of those. So that seems to work just as well. Yep. So if you want to be efficient about it, <clears throat> well, we've done two filters here. We've said um, if there's no apostrophe in the word, we get rid of all those words, and then we go through the whole list again, and we get rid of those uh, that are not uh, that, that are not lowercase. So we can just combine those two things like this. If if there's no apostrophe and the word is lowercase. Okay. Looks good. Make sure we still have a working program. Okay. So now we only have 63,000 words in our dictionary. We got rid of uh, we got rid of a lot of bad ones. Okay, what next? Yep. Uh, if you scroll up, you'll have that sound is a really weird word that backslashes. Yeah, so these have, uh, these are actually some kind of escape characters. Um, and, uh, well, we'll see what happens when they actually get printed. Um, we'll, maybe they'll show up in our testing, maybe not. Uh, we could, uh, well, I mean, let's see. Okay. Uh, we'll do that. We'll filter our words. And so you notice that in this list of the first 50 words, there's these guys here that look a little bit strange. Um, remember, when we do this, we're seeing the programmer's view of things. Um, it's not clear so that, that we see escape characters, for example, in strings. If we print them, we may see something different. So let's see what, uh, what happens when we print them. So those are, uh, those are those characters there that you're seeing. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you know how to control your keyboard, we should be able to, if you have a French keyboard, you should be able to unscramble those words as well. Okay. Um, all right. So we have a program that's working. Good. Uh, it loads the dictionary, gets rid of the problematic words. What, what now? Yep. Uh, you can sort the words in terms of length. Okay. So you want to get, uh, get fancy right away. So you would like to sort the words in terms of, uh, in terms of length. So the idea there is maybe this could help us to control the difficulty of the game. So. Uh, it's easier to unscramble 
two letters than it is to unscramble 15 letters. Um, and so maybe we can control difficulty by controlling the length of the words. Yep. You can also control difficulty by controlling how many words. <coughs> you can use into. How many words what? Uh, what, it's not clear to me what's easier actually. So if you have a set of letters that can make a lot of words, that's probably easier, right? Um, it's a little, that's a little tougher for us to, to control. So let's start with the, the easier strategy, um, with, uh, just sorting by length. So maybe we don't want to just return an array of words, because if we pick a random one, uh, it's probably going to be fairly long. Um, and we can actually test that if we want. So uh, let's explore this a bit. And let's pick 10 random words here and see what we get. So topping, retaining, toggles, these are getting, I mean, the random ones are already pretty big. Tangling, for example, uh, if you rearrange the letters in that, it might be difficult to realize that that's, to, to put those back together. Um, at least, you know, for the first, for the first question. So, so maybe, maybe we should organize these things into, uh, into different lengths. Um, so how do we get, for example, all of the words whose length is three? Yep. Well, we can ask for an individual word. We can just ask its length. The word is just a string, and you can ask for its its length. So, what if I want just the words of length three? So this is solving the same problem we've solved twice now. So what if I want just words of length three? How do I get that? Yep. Yeah. So, so if we want just the words of a specific length, If the length of W is equal to 3, we get all the words of length 3, for example. So maybe we'd just like to, uh, you know, we'd like a list of the words of length 3, a list of the words of length 4, a list of the words of length uh, 5, and so on. So this here will give us a list of the words of length 3. Uh, but I want 3, 4, 5, and so on. So it seems like I want to iterate. So in general, I would like the words of length i. Let's see what this gives us.
So A, this thing that I just created is an array of length 10. Can somebody tell me what's at position 0 in this array? An empty array. So not exactly nothing, but pretty close. Can somebody tell me what's at the, in this thing at, at position 1? Yep. All the words with length 1. So this thing, dictionary seems to include letters as words. Um, fine. And then all the words of length 2, all the words of length 3, all the words of length 4, all the words of length 5, and so on. So what, and up to, uh, up to words of length 9. After that, we, uh, we've dropped everything. Yep. Um, we could, if we wanted an array that had all the words of length 0 up to 3, for example, if we just change this to uh, if the length is less than or equal to i. But what we'd like is maybe I start this game out using three-letter words, and then once you've got a few of those, it goes up to four-letter words, and then up to five-letter words, and, and so on. So this is a, a pretty good way to organize it. And if we want, so that we don't lose too much... Uh, too much here, maybe we want the final thing is we append onto A all the words whose length is bigger than or equal to 10. So if you get that far into the game, you're descrambling 10 letter words, then, uh, then you're doing great. Okay. Now this line of code doesn't make sense anymore because it's going to say it has 11 words in its dictionary, but that's okay. We don't... Well, uh, yeah. Could you not limit the uh, range also for, for instance, start at uh, words that have two characters, two characters more? Not that I have to include uh, the... Uh, no guessing if it's one of the better guess. How do you mean? Oh, you mean the one-letter words? Yeah, so we'll probably start at three-letter words. There's, they're easy, but, well, they're pretty easy. Uh, one- and two-letter words, not, not so interesting. Um, okay. So let's comment that out. Maybe we'll, we'll put it in later if we want to get fancy again. So now what? So we have a working program. <coughs> uh, we've loaded all the words. We have this array that has 11 elements. And uh, at position i are the list of all the words that have i characters in them. So what's next in the game? Scrambling the words. Uh, yeah, so now we would like to scramble the words. Or we would like to scramble the word, we'd like to ask a question, right? We want the game to start. So far it's not interactive yet. Um, and in order to ask a question, we want to scramble a word. Okay, so let's write a function. That... Uh, takes a word, a string w, and scrambles it, and more specifically, return w converted to an array, and shuffled. So we create an array, and we say we want this array to contain each character c, uh, 4c in w. So that, that creates an array that, uh, that has the, the word in it. So let's say, uh, let's say words at 3 at 50, just for 
testing purposes. So we pick the 50th word of length three, and we, we call this scramble thing, and let's just see what, we've, what this does for us. Okay, this says none, because we haven't returned anything. Okay, so there's, there's the 50th three-letter word in our dictionary. It's the word that has a B, an E, and a T. Right? So this is, again, the syntax. Uh, we're making an array by specifying what we want in it, and uh, it contains the character C for each character C in the word W. So the word is bet. Um, now, is this what we want to present to the user? No. It's going to be kind of easy if we do it this way, right? Um, so we'd like to shuffle this thing. And something you'll probably end up using no matter what kind of game you make uh, is the random module. So basically for games, either you need to create a lot of, uh, a lot of content, which is what you know, big <coughs> movie studio or studio games do. They hire hundreds of artists to, uh, to create lots of content for the game or you rely on randomness to make the game to, to create content for you. Um, and what we're looking to do is shuffle an array. So we go to this random module, and we see that indeed there's a, uh, a method called shuffle that shuffles a sequence. So we'll call random.shuffle So let's test our game now. Okay, so now it presents us with TBE, or TEB, or TEB, or BTE. So it, it presents us with that word, which we've already looked at. We know it's bet, and it's shuffled it for us. That's the kind of thing we want to, uh, we want to display to the, uh, the user. Uh, now, do we want to display the same word every time? Do we want this game to always start with the same word? Yeah. Could you put like a piece of random to generate a number to put in the second half of the scramble word? Yep. Yeah. So if we go back to this, look at this documentation for this random module, right above this, there's a, uh, a method called choice that returns a random element from the non empty sequence. Um, and if it's empty, it gives an error. So let's use that. So what we want is random dot choice words at three. So words at three is this list of all the words of length three. Uh, we want this thing to choose a random one for us and then we scramble it. Let's test that. So FNA, DEN, UPY, UEC, this looks good, right? Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's split this up a little bit. We seem to have the the pieces we need. So we pick our word. Well, actually, maybe we don't even need to. Well, here's, here's a, a question about this. Um, so this word here, what, this is a word that it picked from the dictionary and then scrambled. What word was it? Pit. Or? Pit. Or pit. Tip or pit? Um, yes. I don't know. We have no way of knowing whether it was tip or pit. Uh, and we shouldn't punish the user who unscrambles this, right? So in some sense, we don't actually even care which word we picked and scrambled, so we don't mind forgetting it. All we really care about is the scramble. Um, 
How are we going to check if the user unscrambled it correctly? Well, we're just going to go into the dictionary and look for the thing that they've, they've entered. It may not be the one that we picked and scrambled, but that doesn't matter. Okay? So, let's say, we'll call that thing the egg. Okay, and um, so we want to do some, let's say, nice formatting. So you give me this scrambled egg, and I will say. Uh, Not a great piece of code. Um, okay, so there it prints the uh, the, the words that it gets in some nicer way, the letters that it gets in some nice way. And now let's ask the user. Um, so, unscramble this word, I think it's pen. Good. So our program works. Um, I mean, it's a working program. It just doesn't have the feature yet of checking if the user was correct. So how do we know if this word is correct, the, the one that the user entered? Yep. What's that? OK. So, um, so the user's word is correct if it's in the dictionary. So if the string that the user input is in uh, words at, well, words of length three, then print yes, correct. Otherwise, we'll print wrong. Uh, the correct answer is we might as well give them the answer so that they can learn something. Uh, ah, actually, we can't give them the answer here because we've lost it. So we won't bother with that. Just say wrong. We'll maybe want to change our code later to make that a bit, a bit better. Okay, what's this word? Yep. Banana. Right or wrong? Wrong. Close, though. Yep. Cat. Right or wrong? Correct. Why is that correct? <laughs> yeah. It's a three-letter word that's in our dictionary, right? We check if the input is in the dictionary at this words at position three, which is all the words of length three. Okay, so there's something not quite right here. Um, what, what else, what's missing from this check of correctness? We have to make sure that it has all the letters. Well, so, well, there's two things. It has to be in the dictionary, so that's good. We've, we've nailed that. Um, 
but it also has to be a reordering of the letters that, of the, the question that we gave, a reordering of the letters in egg. Um, does anybody know a way to check if one word is a reordering of the other, of another? Yeah. Yeah, so check if it's an anagram, but that's just, that's just another way of asking the question again. Um, anybody think of an easy way? Yep. Check if the letter, the word in here has other letters Yeah, so if you think about what it means for the two words to be anagrams of each other, uh, they have to have, for example, the same length. They have to, every letter that occurs in the first one has to occur the same number of times in the second one. There should be no letter in the second one that occurs in the first one. But it turns out that there's actually a, the, the cleanest and easiest way to do this um, is just to do the following. Uh, so I'll give you a string and I will give you this egg, which is an array of letters. And I'll say egg2 is equal to uh, C, 4, C, and S. So now I have two arrays, egg and egg2. Um, we're hoping that they have the, the same letters in them, just in different order. So how can we check that quickly? Yep, sort, sort them and see if they're exactly the same after we sort them. So we can say egg.sort, egg2.sort, and return true if egg is equal to egg2. Okay? So Interactively, we can, uh, we can test that. Um, so let's say S equals look, A equals C for C and S. So there's A, S2 equals cool, and A2 is equal to C for C and S. So now I've got A is look, A2 is uh, yeah, S2, A2 is, uh, is cool, and if I want to know if they're equal, well I can sort A, gives me that, K-L-O-O, -O. I can sort A2, and are those two things equal? Yes, they are because they have the same elements in the same order. Um, so that's a way to check if one word is an anagram of another. You sort this by letters and, uh, and check if they're the same after sorting. Yep. Um, before you even scrambled the word, did you notice know this kind of appended the elements into another array? And then like, the Well, there's still this question of, uh, of ordering, right? So there's two things. I can't just compare the, uh, the unscrambled word to the user's input because the unscrambled word could be uh, tip, but the user input's pit, and pit is still correct. So, so I'm stuck with this checking to see that the two things match and that it's in the dictionary. I have to sort of split it up that way. Okay, uh, so... If S is in words, at three, more, and even better, um, if we check S and egg, and S is in words at three, then it's correct. So what's this word? Ma, yes, correct. Uh, NNI, well that's, is it pit? 
No, it's not, even though pit is in the dictionary. There's one. Um, okay, so, so far, it looks like we've got the, the mechanical stuff that we need. We can, we can present the user with a scrambled word, we can read their answer and check if it's correct, um, but right now, this game just does this once. What's the next step? Yeah. Okay. So let's say um, we want to implement this three lives thing. So we'll say lives equals three. And while lives is bigger than zero, we want to do that. So as long as there's still some lives left, we'll do that. We'll present them with a question. And what, uh, what else do we need here? Yep. And you need to subtract the lives? If, if they get it wrong. Yes. Yeah. So if they got it wrong, we subtract one from lives. Okay, so wrong, and then we'll say, we'll keep reminding them how many lives they have left. That makes it more stressful for them. And, all right, so we want to ramp up the difficulty, and so each time they get it right, we will uh, we'll increase the word length. So we'll make a variable for the word length called... Uh, Length uh, equals length plus one. So now we have to be careful. Uh, so here we were looking at words of length three. We want to actually work, look at words of length length. And also here. Of course, each time through the while loop, we want to pick a different word, not just keep asking them the same question over and over. Okay? So we've got a while loop now that will uh, loop as long as the lives is bigger than zero. Live starts out at three. Yep. Yeah. So I want to initialize length. And so it will pick a word of that length, scramble it present it and ask you to unscramble it. If that's correct, we'll increase the length. And if that's incorrect, we, uh, we decrease the number of lives. All right. I don't know what else it could be. Wrong. Eb. Um, okay, what's this one? Pause. Is that a word? Seems so. This one? That? Zoos, yep. This one? This one? Missing the Y for donkey. Conked, like so. Conked. This one. Gets hard pretty quickly, eh? <laughs> Wiling? No. Beats me. Wrong. <laughs> now what? <laughs> okay. 
I don't know, beats me. Okay, so, uh, so then we lose. So, so any notes on the playability of this? Yeah. It didn't give the answer to the last word? No, it doesn't give the answer to any of them. Maybe it should. So maybe we should, uh, we should refactor our code so that it, uh, it saves that answer. So for that, we would do, we pick a random word and we'll save it. And when you get it wrong, At least we'll get to see what the, uh, the answer is. But we'll never know what this one was because we, don't, we won't get that one again. Is this stress a word? Mr. Hayu. I don't know. Let's find out. Hugh Mary. Okay. Flemo? Nobody? P H L O M. Flom. Okay. <clears throat> Tempting to write bonsoir here, but that's not right. Okay. So anyway, it tells us the answers when we don't get them, and uh, and they're often surprising. Um, okay. So. Uh, so that's good. It does that for us. Uh, we go up to our list of, of wishes. It does present the user with some letters they should arrange. Should be fun to play. Yep. Sorry, you'll have to talk louder. It's uh, I don't know where there's a list of words in a file in Windows. Um, there's probably one on the system somewhere, but the easiest thing is just to, uh, to Google user dict words and download, uh, download the file you get from there. But yeah, user, user share dict words won't be in your Windows install, installation. Yeah? I think it's now a list. Um, it's uh, possible to show that you can skip quickly. <laughs> a boss key, that's called. You guys probably don't know about these, but uh, back in the, in the day, games came with something called a boss key, so that when you were playing a game at work, uh, you, uh, there's a button you can hit, and the game disappears, and up pops something that looks like you're doing some work. Um, there used to be something that looked like a complicated spreadsheet or, or whatever. Uh, I, you don't see those that much anymore. Uh, so is, it, is the game fun to play yet? I'll give it a half for that. Uh, does it keep track of score? No. So we better do that. Is it challenging? Yes, for sure. We have three lives. We haven't incorporated any amount of uh, limited time. We don't really have the notion of levels yet, unless you count doing one word as a level. So we could put in a boss word after each level, something of length 10 or more. 
um, if you want. Um, shouldn't harass the player repeatedly. Yeah. We don't have a skip feature. I mean, the, the way you skip is you just give up and lose a life. Um, could we implement a hint? Would it be easy to implement a hint? Yeah. You could do what? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we could do starts with. Uh, Starts with H, starts with T, what's this one? Not obvious to me, yep, yep. Yes, so it's just a hint, um, I mean if you want to be more specific about that you could say one solution starts with S. A lot of A's. I don't know. Anyway, palatial, of course. <clears throat> um, okay, so we've got that. Yep. Sorry, if you, is there an end to the game, you mean? Okay, so there is a bug in this program, uh, and you're pointing towards it. So what is the bug here? Yeah, so our array, when we loaded the words, uh, we only looked up to words that have ten letters, right? Uh, well, we, we, we did words 0 through 9, so our array entries contain words of length 0 through 9, and then the last entry at position 10 contains any word that's longer than that. But if you look at our code, every time we, uh, we get something correct, we increase the length by 1, and uh, so eventually the length will become 11, we'll try and use that as an index into the array, and this code will break. So maybe we should... Definitely, we should uh, So what are our words called? Words. And it's not max, but min. 
So this is a fairly common way to, uh, to deal with these kinds of things. Um, you, you know, you'd like to increase the length by one at each step, but only up to a maximum value of the largest index in the, uh, that's available in the array, which is the length of the array minus one. So, um, you know, length will keep this, this value length would like to increase, but, uh, but it gets capped there. So we got rid of that bug, which we wouldn't have found probably in this class. Um, anything else? Yep. Score. score. So we're not keeping track of score. So we'll start with a score of zero. Um, and another thing about games is... Uh, for extra fun, you use lots of exclamation points and big scores. So, I don't know, 10,000 at a time is a good, uh, good thing to do. Okay, and maybe so one thing that I don't quite like is it's kind of abrupt, right? It just says zero lives remaining. Oof, that's, the, that's the end. Might be nice to finish with a, a little summary of what happened. Uh, so game over. Anybody know this one? Yes? No? Gunny? Okay. No? No N? Don't know. Um, okay, so at least it gives you a, a game over screen and, uh, and a final score. So we can check that off. <coughs> What's that? Uh, I don't know. Do you, uh, do video games punish you, take away score usually? Sometimes. Sometimes. It's up to you. You can, you can play with the scoring system. Um, I mean, you lose a life, so ultimately that's going to affect the, how big your score can be. Um, it's, up to, it's up to the game designer. Um, maybe one thing that I would like to do, just very quickly, uh, so we have score in there, is do something with time. And I'll do this by stealing a snippet of code that I wrote a couple of days ago. And that's this thing here. So this code unfortunately is not very portable, so don't, I don't recommend you use it in your game. Um, But we'll see if it. See if it makes this game a bit better. A 
Let's see. Uh, five seconds. Okay, you have five seconds. Well, like is if this thing does not give any input, we'll just return the empty string. Okay, five seconds. Bug. Lot. Job. Ah, something's wrong. String. Let's just debug this. So it's got a, uh, <coughs> the string that we get has an extra new line at the end. So we can clean that up this way. slow. Five seconds is not a lot of time. Okay, so, um, so you see you can make things a lot more urgent by, uh, by putting a time limit. Maybe five seconds is not the ideal number, but uh, you know, maybe ten seconds is better. So you can play with that a bit and see, see how it works. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll leave it at there for today. I think we've done a pretty good job of making a playable game.